Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Croft Studios here, and I'm here with an awesome new type of video style I'm doing here, and I'm doing a Ninjago Theory video. And I've been wanting to do these for a while, and I have had this one planned. So the first one I'm going to be doing is the What If the uh, Great Devourer Never Existed, which is a very interesting question I've pondered before. I've come together with a lot of information of what could have probably happened if the Devourer was never unleashed, if Pythor failed to, le to put all four fang blades on the monument. So we're going to get straight into detail of what would first be affected if the Devourer never existed. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, Garmadon would not be a hero because he definitely would not have stopped a great Devourer if it never existed. So he would still be known as an evil villain in Ninjago, which it wouldn't really change too much um, since he is known as a villain in the future as well in later seasons. Um, but this would affect greatly what happens in the next season, which is the Stone Warriors would not exist. If you guys remember correctly from the show, the Stone Warriors' existence came to being from the Constricti, which actually dug a lot of holes and stuff around the actual shrine underneath Ninjago City, which is where the Stone Warriors were at. But unfortunately, since the Constricti didn't, well, they obviously still dug the holes, but the venom would have never seeped from the Great Devourer into the sewers. So meaning the Stone Warriors would have never come to life which greatly affects even the next season going forward. But think about it, in this season, this is where Garmadon got his army and was able to go to the Island of Darkness and, create, and get all of his workers there with those Stone Warriors. But since he didn't have them now with that Venom, what is Garmadon's workforce? I'm guessing he would have used the snakes that he used before, but those guys are really kind of pathetic. Now, knowing Garmadon, since he doesn't really have a viable workforce, I think Lloyd still completes the prophecy and uh, defeats his father, except it's a lot easier, which means the, um, the actual overlord doesn't make it to Ninjago City since he doesn't have an army to get him there. Now, since that happens, in my opinion, I don't think Zane ends up dying in the next season, which I'll explain why. But obviously, the Overlord will not end up making it to Ninjago City, meaning buildings aren't destroyed, a lot of less mayhem going on downtown, and people are less scared. And Lloyd is obviously still revered as a hero. So it will move. St and also, another touch Dareth actually doesn't get confidence because he actually had the helmet of, um, it was called the Helmet of Shadows, which he wore and controlled the Stone Army, which would have never happened as well. So Ninjago Rebooted would have been crazy as a whole because if the Overlord never made it to Ninjago City, this is theoretically speaking, but if he never made it there, then that means he, the building would have not been built over the Overlord's death ground, meaning the Overlord would have died on the island, and obviously Borg would not have had the problem of being hacked by the Overlord, which would obviously take away from the whole Rebooted season, which you can see how far down the line these things affect things um, in the Ninjago universe. So that means Zane probably would not have met Pixel, which is another big character in the Ninjago series, which would have been affected as well. And that mean that means Zane would not have died fighting the Overlord in Ninjago City. Who knows? Maybe he would have died on the island as well, protecting his friends. But I think they would have done it a lot easier without the Stone Warriors, and Zane would not have died during that. So I think that would have been a lot easier. So if Zane never actually died as well, um, it would have affected the Chen season since he wouldn't have taken Zane and kept him locked up. Locked up. No, but it was never really explained how he got Zane in the first place, but obviously he wouldn't have got him this time. Um, so obviously that would have affected the Chen season. I think they would have defeated Chen a little bit easier. And another small tidbit is that the little stone warriors in the uh, in the. Uh, since a Yang season, if you guys remember that Day of the Departed episode, they would not have come to life as well. Those little stone warrior dudes would not have come to life due to the venom. So that's also a small tidbit. But that's pretty much all it would have affected. If you th guys think of anything else, let me know in the comments below. But let's move on to the ending of this video. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the first edition of Ninjago Theory. Tell me if you liked the video down in, down in the comments below and what you think I should do next. I'm definitely taking suggestions since I haven't really thought too much about these topics, but I do a ton of research when I do these videos, so tell me what you think I should do next down in the comments below. thought this one was a really interesting topic since it affects everything down the line. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Tell me what you think, and hope you subscribe to the channel if you like the video. Um, leave a like on the video as well if you really did like the video that much. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and thanks for watching.